Happy AC Nation, Zach Edwards here for another Stump the Creator. Hey, so if you haven't been part of this, this is what Stump the Creator is. Stump the Creator is basically where you try to stump me as the creator of historical conquest. Now you ask me questions that might stump me when it comes to the cards, about the rules, and so forth. And if you stump me, you get a prize. If you uh, get a good enough question that I'm semi-stumped, I'll get you an honorable mention, which would be a, a, another prize, lesser prize, but still a prize. Um, so these are questions that you send me about the game or about the rules, not about history. I'm not the historian. I'm the guy that puts the games together. I have a historian for that, um, but I'm not the, the best of that. And I think history questions would be almost impossible to do it because there's so much history. No one person could have know everything about history. So they'd have to do some sort of research beforehand and such. So. Lastly, but just stump the creator when it comes to the rules and the cards. Okay, so this is provided by Giovanni. So Giovanni, thank you so much. He's actually the one that helped us down in uh, Arizona. And they had a record-breaking year in their sales down there. Um, one big thing is that the state has now accepted school choice, which is basically they give the families the money to choose their schools that they want to go to, whether it's public schools private schools, charter schools, Montessori schools, or homeschooling. So a lot of people are using that money to buy new curriculum. And they had a great year this year. So thanks so much for being there, Giovanni. Uh, okay, so here are the questions. I might break this up into two because there's so many questions in just this one email. And he has two, two emails the same size. So, but I don't want him to go too long because sometimes I get long-winded. You know, it happens. Okay, here we go. Uh, first one, does locomotive still allow travel within a continent? It says you can move between continents, but does not allow, that does not also allow you to transport a character in the same continent. So Giovanni, great question. Okay, so normally, just so everyone knows, when you have an explorer, it allows you to um, transport between any continent. Locomotive, I think, says that you can transport between continents that are connected by land. So if it's uh, North America to South America, those are, but you can't go North America to Europe because you're not connected by land. Um, you no, know, we don't count ice as land because then uh, everything's connected. Uh, anyways, um, but so an explorer allows you to transport anywhere. It's just a blanket. This is why one of, they're one of the most important cards in the whole game. The locomotive, allows you to go between continents that are connected by land. But if you don't have a, an explorer or a card like the locomotive, you can also know that if you have a card that's in the same continent as something else, you don't need an explorer. So you can actually transport a card from, say, uh, the West Coast to the East Coast of the United States. So you can actually transport or, or parts of Canada down to the East Coast or so forth. But that's because you don't need it if they're in the same continent and there's no limitations there. So, but again, one transport per turn. Okay, question number two. Are vessels still played in a land instead of the active area? Are aircrafts a type of vessel? And due to their border, do cards that allow you to copy technology allow you to, uh, to use those abilities as well? Great question. Okay, so vessels, are stored in lands because you have a vessel you have put in, into a land. Um, aircrafts are also land. Now we had a transition there between HC 1.0 and HC 2.0. And so there might some, be some cards where the vessels are, um, are, uh, <laughs> I'll that. sorry, the vessels are actually known as technology. They're on technology cards, but uh, the, um, as we transitioned into, into creating the vessel card, they're now blue cards, those are placed in lands. Those that are vessels that are technology in uh, 1.0 are also placed in lands as well. And uh, let's see the last part, due to their borders, do cards that allow you to copy technology, allow you to copy the abilities as well. Yes, you can copy them. Um, if they're a technology card, as I was saying, there's a transition. Um, and you can place them in a land as well, if they're a technology card. Now, if they're 
uh, they've been transitioned and it's a blue card, a vessel card, only if something says copy vessel. Otherwise, they're a technology card. Um, and a technology card can be copied, just place it in the land as well, if it's a vessel card. Okay, moving on to rule number three. And just so you guys know, uh, we didn't want everyone to have to buy all brand new decks when we went from AC 1.0 to AC 2.0. And as a business, my business uh, uh, friends, my businessmen friends, businessmen and men, businesswomen friends, would say I'm crazy. I want them to buy 2.0. Yeah, I do. I would like them to buy 2.0. Maybe less confusing, but at the same time, I I I was one of those people that you know, when I played Magic the Gathering, I always had to buy the new cards and I had to buy hundreds of uh, decks just to find one card. I didn't like that uh, model. So we care about you guys and your finances. So we just want you to be able to play the game. We want, of course, we want to be able to fund Historical Conquest, but we're not trying to take advantage of you. Okay, rule number th or question number three. The rule booklet states that under uh, card sets that each player needs a minimum of 50 cards to participate in the game. However, later it says under types of cards that each player should start with a minimum of 50 cards should, I guess it says should, must start with minimum of 50 cards, including at least uh, the following, six lands, 26 characters, four army cards, uh, four event cards, and various, etc. Now, okay, this is why it says should, because we're giving you a breakdown of, the, of what the cards should be. There should be a certain amount of armies, there should be a number amount of characters, event cards, and so forth. If you just place morale cards, in your deck, you're you're prone to two things. And I should also say that in characters, explore is very important. If you stack your deck just full of morale cards, most likely one, you're not gonna find another land, and two, your opponent's gonna take over that land that you have. So you wanna balance your deck. Uh, these are the, going back to the question, these are the only reference uh, to deck construction in the official rules. And since the latter uh, reference uses the word should, it means it is not re a requirement, but a suggestion. And the suggestion is the breakup of the cards. So the six lands, the 26 characters, the four army cards, and the four event cards. But you do, it must have a minimum of 50 cards. Um, therefore, the only rule regarding deck construction is that a deck must contain a minimum of 50 cards. Yes, that is the only requirement. You don't have to have explorers if you don't want to. I would highly suggest it. You don't have to have events. I would highly suggest it. And you don't have to uh, have anything for world domination. But I highly suggest it. Okay, moving on to the next one. Do you have to keep at least one character in a land in a stump the creator you posted on 63022 you mentioned? Okay, yes, you do. You have to at least have one character in each land that you have. If not, it's a limbo card. Basically, the land is in limbo, which means that anybody can take it. And if anyone can take it, you're going to lose it. All I need to do is take an explorer and magic uh, and uh, arrive in that land. They don't even have to attack. It's not even a battle. They just arrive in that land and they take it from you. So you might want to have at least one person to defend it in case somebody tries to take it. Okay, so that is, I think, halfway. No, there's, I'll get one more. It says, is occupying a land with an explorer, okay, that comes with a last question, not optional after an attack. Under the explorer's fourth bu uh, bullet point, it states, both attacking cards must remain in that land. But I thought taking a land after removing all of the characters was optional. Good question. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how I put it in the past. Um, but yes, the rules actually do say you have to, if you're attacking with an explorer and another person and you win the land, you have to stay in that land. You can't transport back because you actually did a complete transportation. You transported, you're allowed to one transport, not two transports, which would be there and then back. So if you complete your, your battle and you win the land, uh, if you win the land without an explorer, it is optional, you can just leave it empty. But if you have an explorer, the rules actually do state 
that the explorer has to stay there because you can't transport there and then transport back. That'd be two transports in a turn. So technically, you have to wait. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, the next one has to do this as well. The one after that does not. So I'm going to have one more question and then we'll put it on to the next video for Thursday. Okay, does invading a land count as a transport? Yes, there you go. If you invade a land, um, it's a transport. If you win, it's a complete transport. If not, it's a failed transport. So you did use your one transport, but you have to go back to the land that you uh, attacked. Go back to your question. Sorry, I went off on the rant. Uh, does invading the land count as a transport? Or could I take more, uh, more than one land in a turn as long as I share a continent with the opponent's empty land and still transport one character within my own civilization at the end of my turn? Okay, so if you're transporting into someone else's land, that is a transport. If you're transporting to another land, that's a transport, whether it's in the same continent or outside the same continent. So either way, it's a transport and those rack up. You're allowed to do one per turn. So if you, and this is why there's limitations because basically you just keep going and going until you just eradicate somebody in one turn. We didn't want that. So we have to put limitations on it, make it a little bit longer, make it a little more enjoyable for both sides. Um, so if you're invading a land using uh, a transport, not battle to battle, that does not count as a transport. Um, sorry, maybe that's part of the, the question. If I'm attacking, let's say, uh, England to Ireland, Scotland, sorry, Scotland. If we attack into Scotland, it is not transport. You're attacking another land. That's a battle if they're in the same continent. If you're transporting with an explorer, that is a transport because you have to transport into another continent to attack. So that's the distinguishing factor between the two. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about what I've said in this video, please put them in the comments below. If you want to start a discussion, maybe you disagree with something, maybe you totally agree with something, maybe you think this is the um, uh, most amazing video ever, which is not. <laughs> I'm not delusional. <laughs> but if you want to uh, compliment the videos, give us suggestions, recommendations, please do. Put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, we will end this now and uh, you'll see the rest of the questions on Thursday. Thank you so much and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you tomorrow actually. Take care, bye.